Hi everyone, and I'm going to talk, I'm going to sort of base this on an aviary that I've built over the last two years, um, which measures roughly 12 metres by 10 metres, and it's on quite a steep slope, as you can see, because there's, there's steps in it. But I'll probably end up spending most of the time talking about um, various technologies and stuff, that's kind of the aim, but it's all stuff that's in this aviary, so I'll just sort of begin with an introduction to um, to what's in here. And the first thing I've got is this mouse at work. Thank you, Polly Poisonous. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, sorry, first a little bit of an overview. So the reason that I did this, when I was a kid, as most of us started out, you probably had, you know, an aviary in the backyard where you had a couple of zebra finches and then you put some doves in it and you put some clay on it and maybe you got a budgie or a pair of birds or something or other and you had sort of mixed birds and I guess over the years I went to having well that for, for a long time I was breeding exhibition budgies as a as a young bloke and then you know more recently I, I was breeding mutation bullions for a long time and you know much more traditional I suppose the sort of aviaries that a lot of people have in a backyard so I really wanted something that was much bigger I always wanted to have soft bills as well so that's what this was about once I moved on to acreage. So I've been around right now nearly 10 years. Um, and the acreage I've got are generally bigger, but not as big as this one. Um, so I wanted to put them all in the one acreage. I know it's not the best thing in terms of breeding, but it's, to me it's the best thing in terms of being able to sit in the acreage and have your coffee in the morning in that chair that you saw in the last spot. And the birds are all around you. You can chuck mealworms down and red cap robins and splendid wrens come and grab them. Uh, I put this in there. Does anyone know what that is? Really? No. Pintar. Pintar. It's a Pintar water. It's my one and only Pintar water that I've read. This is my second year with them, and that's only my first young one. I've got hundreds of single leaders, and it's only one of them, so I had to go in there. And they're young orange chaps, so they were the first soft bills that I've. That, well, I don't know whether they were actually the first ones because I've read it's orange chaps, but. But that's a nest of orange chats as well. I know we're a finch club and there's lots of finches in there too, but that, that was part of it. Um, and also, with big, I mean, it takes you almost as long to, to put a heap of food in one big aviary yeah. as it does to just feed one little aviary in a bank. Now, I'm saying all that, but you know what I'm building at the moment? The bank of six, <laughs> one metre by four metre aviary, so for special stuff. So, you know, I'm not totally convinced. And, Ask me in another 12 months, I'll probably change my mind again. Um, I'll just run through. So, this is a video that just shows. So, this is my looking out. That's if you know Joe's Mogul, that's Spaniards Hill coming out there. So, this is our, our acreage. And it's built on this, it's deceptive. Actually, it's a lot steeper than what it looks there. So, the steps all going down um, to there. And so, you can walk in one door. No, I haven't got a safety door because I walk in and out of here dozens of times a day. I work down in the garage down that building and the house up the top. I'll sit here and have a coffee in the morning. So it's all seeding grasses that I just chuck on the ground there for the birds to eat, and the, the walls obviously all lined with um, um, brush for all the breeding. I've obviously just chucked a bit of grass there to make sure that they, some of them at least come down. There's a web camera there, there's black lights, and we'll talk about all these things later. On the, in terms of trapping them, and there's the web camera again. Um, there's these pages here are actually traps that I can remotely release and we'll look at how those work. There's a vinegar fly here. Um, as there's, there are, there's there's scale chest of parrots down the bottom there. There's also you can probably saw sort of perpetrating lorikeets that connect her up there for the honey eaters, of course the lorikeets do as well. In fact they all leave a bit of everything. Cubans love nectar. They see that little cube if you throw up and see them um, drinking nectar. That's a baby, baby purple crown lorikeet. Um, Climbers for the lights. There's a mist system in there as well. No birds have electrocuted themselves so far, as far as I'm aware. Just looking at that tarot sitting there on a 240 mile table. Um, that's mealworms, but you know. So everything, every, everyone's got access to everything. Um, the main life that I feed is, well, obviously mealworms, but also lots of peaks and maggots, as most of us do. But the lights are there to attract moths and stuff, and then there's the vinegar flies. So um, there's two body bolts in there, which makes, makes things nice to be able to hook up a lot of these contraptions. There's a 
boot lamp on the floor, which I've only just turned on because we've had a couple of cold days. And it's amazing how young birds, they're going to be, what they find it? They're going to be over that. There are a couple of young diamonds under it just afternoon, you know, just after that, I don't know if you got that big storm, it was a huge storm in my place. And then it was freezing with the wind, and they're all under there. So this is, the, the aviary is basically enclosed on the western side and the southern side, and, and reasonably open on the eastern side, put it open on the north. Um, this is the um, remote so I've got a transformer that goes down to this. So I've got, got one here that I'll show you later on that's, that runs on the battery, obviously, that you haven't got a powering aviary to use as a trap. There's obviously catching birds in there as a nightmare. And to be perfectly honest, there are species in there that are completely out of control already after you have this. Like orange breasts, there's ones that have got rings on that are breeding and there's diamonds that are breeding and you know. Because yeah, yeah. you can't, I, I mean I work full time still so yeah. I don't have time to sit there and trap every single one and then of course you see a bird without a ring because it's all the adults in theory got rings. Yeah. <laughs> you see a bird feeding young ones that haven't got a ring in it. There are, and obviously the, and the state of are completely out of control, I don't know how he's in there, well over 100. Oh, the bush bogeys, was that a bush bogey or was it a lorica? There's bush bogeys in there too. Um, there's, have you seen any soft bills yet? I wasn't watching. Oh, there's, that's the red cat robin hen. That's the red cat robin hen. She's very, she's terrific. <laughs> What's that? You see nothing but. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> there are a few pictures in there. Um, some sisters in the back, Gabarini. Uh, Gabarinis as well, they've sort of, you know, they're, um, everybody knows that it's impossible to catch Gabarinis even in a cabinet. You <laughs> 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 even find them, you know. So well, there's a pair in there that I actually I won at Hawkesbury some time ago in a, a, one of your Christmas meetings. And I thought, oh, I'll chuck them in there. And I don't think I've ever caught one of them since. <laughs> um, that's an orange chat crop that you just saw. That there was blue or not a slender green hen in that shot somewhere. I think there's a better shot of a slender green somewhere. So I just wandered around in there um, the day before yesterday. I haven't edited it. There's a young diamond looking a little bit undercooked. Um, so you saw the pinto white. Oh, you saw the pinto white. You saw the cotton. Yeah, yeah, he's still coloured at the moment. Um, obviously, painted pinches. The painted. So you can't get over that side. They start to show their natural behaviour, but mind you, those paint finches are up high. But you've got to be careful you don't tread on them, because they spend their whole time on the ground, on the gravel pathways, mucking around, I don't know what they're eating, but mucking around finding stuff. Um, Eastern's fine, will they? The orange chat's about a huge success. I got them from, that's, that's when I organised for Gary McRae to come over actually. I had not long got them when I was talking to him, so they came from Gary's. So I bred quite a few and sold a few and, and stuff too. That's the cock orange chat. They get very quiet too, but not as quiet as the wrens and the robins. The robins particularly, because they sort of, the robin or he has his one spot or two where they sit in the bushes and they watch you. Oh, that's a white fronted chat. That's the hen I just, I only just got the hen from, um, from Glen Bowden at Orange Sale. The cock's much brighter colours. And that, that's um, Niger, I mean, if you've been in the magazine, that's some of the Niger that I've grown myself. So that was the frozen stuff. But as you can see, generally it's the systems that are up there already. The other birds do too. Yeah, there's the pin tunnel I've Now there might be a wren. They're normally out all the time. Yeah, there's the hen. So that's the hen, splendid wren. They have a colour at the moment, but you saw you saw the cock in that first photo. Um, so the cock at the moment doesn't look exactly like the hen. It's still got a little bit of blue, but he's pretty much lost all his colour at the moment. So I sit, and I, I'll, you know, you chuck a mealworm there, and the robin will be sitting up here on its perch, and it just comes in, takes it, and takes off. And now I've got it so that on the seat next to me, I can put a mealworm and she'll, she or he will bolt in, grab the mealworm and nick off. But other people, um, a friend of mine up in Newcastle, way, he's got a black bird out of his hand, you know, they all just come, including even the um, um, honey eaters. There you go, Joe, I've still got one gold wing, you see that? Yeah. I've got to get a hen off Joe at some stage, but I'll, I'll wait until I've 
walked out of the other, but it's better there. I don't think they're going to run in there at the moment, but there's only one goal we're going to get there. But hopefully it'll be like those uh, hard lights I was telling you about. And I'll breathe heat tonight, just from the way. <laughs> <laughs> There are actually in the. Oh, that's a pinto white hen there. Look at this. It looks like a sparrow. Yeah, I know, we're all assistants this year. There's a few, few, few in there. Yeah. That's the red cap Robin Cock. So he's lost a bit of colour compared to when I first got him because I got him off Stephen Hale. I don't know if anybody knows Stephen, but he's. Um, I don't know what he's, he's, I'm saying he's president of the Softball Club, but he's not actually, is he? He's something, treasurer or something. But now it's off to a breeder. And, and what Steve, oh that's Scal and Honey Eater, um, he was injecting the red factor stuff into mealworms when it, at molting time and feeding it to the red cap robin. So he looked fantastic when I got him off Stephen, but I'm a bit slow, I'm obviously haven't done that. So he's just molted and he's gone a bit and gone lost a bit of colour. Snake in there. Snake in there, yeah. <laughs> the hose. Not sure I'm not. Oh, this is where, see what this crap here? That's where I cut all the bushes and I chucked it all down there thinking, yeah, all right, at some stage I'll get rid of it. Well, I went to get rid of it and that's where, that's, so that's the, that's the, that's the robin hen and the, and one of the scale, the, sorry, one of the scale honey earth fox. But mask benches, I bred more mask benches in that pile of rubbish in the corner there last year than anywhere else. And also the chats, the orange chats brewed in there. And they've got a little cut nest right down low on the ground. So, because I went to remove it, I thought, gee, fantastic man, I'll leave it. And then, oh, there's another mess, another mess. So, they like going down low. So, that was probably mainly St. Louis that took it. <laughs> so, that's the chat here. I don't know, Tom. <laughs> <I'm not lying. laughs> too many, too many is the truth. But, I mean, the, look, the reality is that's the cop, um, white front chat. The rent, like, there's always something going on, obviously, because there's that many birds. And no, they don't breed as well. Like there's, for instance, there's only two pairs of diamonds in there that have got breeding time. Okay? I don't know how many diamonds you've seen, but there's a lot more than two, <laughs> two pairs in there. And there are ones, like probably that chick that I just saw, because I noticed there's, a, there's three or four in that nest that have come out. Well, they're being fed by diamonds that don't have rings on them. Yeah. You know, so that's the trouble with, with being able to decide that if you don't have time to, yeah. to watch, it's very difficult to catch them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, I know um, other people like, well, I know David Holmes with his, 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 his this is like a little cat compared to some of the average he's got, but he goes in once a year with a sheep, like a big sheet of, I don't know what it is, I wasn't saying do it, but I'll, 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 I'm imagining it's like a big sheet of plastic. But it's the whole lot down into the area down the bottom and just captures absolutely everything. Except the Japarinkis, because somehow they get through. <laughs> and gets the whole lot out and, you know, just goes through everything. And, and bad luck if there happens to be some that are still nesting, well, that's just the way it is. And he said that to me, that's what you've got to do, just catch the whole lot up every 12 months. <coughs> Probably is. Alright, so that was just to sort of give you an idea. Now, the next... Um, Sam, quick question. Yeah. Was your paper in pre before you were no, but that's what I'm going to look at next, is um, sort of what I did to build. Originally, and there's probably people in this room, I know that, there's people in this room who saw it before. When I first moved into this place, I built, the original aviary was about, was just this section, you see that's a little bit older, so that's that front section. It was about, that's about eight metres long by three or four metres deep. And I did plant some of these plants in there at that time. There's a Malaluca and a bottle brush that's in there that's probably so there's the best part of 10 years old. Sorry? And the snake, yeah, there's a bloody brown snake. That right there. Because it was all over the ground, you know, as you do, we've seen in grasses and I was in there chasing the water. I saw this in the eyes come up the green. I went in with the whipper skipper to try to get it, and you, you know, you sort of had all wrapped up, overalls and boots, and you know, and my wife there with the phone reader in the paramedics. <laughs> <laughs> um, but going, oh, no, I don't know, it must have come, I don't know how it's in, it must have come in the outside or something. Put it in there. Yep. Shut the door behind you. The door behind you. I've got to talk more this way. No, shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind me. Yeah, yeah. The freezer. Okay. Probably a snake that long. 
not that dirty in your birds. Uh, well, we, one of the places we went to Orange, in the yeah. open, he had the same problems. And he's a bigger brown snake in his own. Do you reckon they come to the outside? Yeah, I reckon they do. They must. Well, they must go out through the outside. So, because I was thinking, right, I mean, I would have checked everywhere else, there's only that corner of people who's got to be in there, you know. That wasn't there. Uh, that was yeah. it could have been a baby yeah. suit, because they have baby yeah. I, I mean, unless they bite you, yeah. but they, I don't reckon snakes, are, rats are still ten times worse than oh, a snake yeah. in the yeah. yeah. I had a rat in the yeah. over, another place I was at, and I mean, it killed, yeah. I don't know, it would have been in the it would have killed 40 or 50 birds. Yeah. 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 Just roots and guts out. Yeah. 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 Um, so you can see that it's pretty steep. I, don't, I wouldn't encourage anybody to build on a slope like that. It's an absolute nightmare. Why and I'm not good with heights. I've got, I do. I mean, when you come to my place, you'll see that I do live on a slope. You know? So a lot of the land is pretty steep, but yeah, I've, top of I've got other spots that are much flatter. It was, it was more because of what it's going to look like, and also. It's, but that was a nightmare to maintain that slope because it was too too steep to mud. I've got a tractor that you know that most of the place with, but it was too steep to even for that. So that was part of the reason, I guess. And also just because I didn't think it would be as bad to build <laughs> so it as it turned out to be. Um, and it, it, it looked, to be honest, it's awesome now that it's done. So it is built on the slope. So that's the back of it. So you can see that that's. So this is the western side and that's the southern side. Mm -hmm. And this roots, this is probably nearly four, about four metres and it's about three metres, the current section that runs down the other side. But what's the planning you've used? It's all, it's palings, three to pine palings. Uh, they're cheap as anything, so there are two widths. So there's like a wider one and then a smaller one on top. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm using them again because they're, they, they're all dodgy. And there's so many you got big knots in them and things that I couldn't use or let you cut around and all that. It, it, it would have been easier to just buy better quality timber. The idea is, like my wife liked the idea of it, because it'll sort of weather and turn grey and it'll look alright, but you can't see it's near the house, you know. Um, so that was sort of the theory, but I probably would invest in better quality stuff because it was a bit of a pain in it at all. And obviously it took a while, but there's a hell of a lot of nails you've got in there. Um, and you're standing on it, but this is this tip of this that's like 45 degrees, you know, <laughs> and you're sort of putting up bits of scaffolding and stuff so you can stand there banging nails, you know, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> and the bloody palings, if it rains a bit and then dries out, they all just go, <laughs> until you got up, you know, so you've got to make sure that you pack everything out properly and seal it and hold it down. Sorry? Did you hear a nail? I have heard of a nail down there. I did use a nail there for something. So that was the start of it. So that was the old, that was what the old one. So those plants are obviously in there. Just building the steps, putting up a couple of posts. Um, there's, there's the steps again. I was going to use this hard mesh stuff for the roof. I, and some people were saying it's fantastic. Some people were saying not to. Do you know the stuff? It's like flat, but it's flexible. A lot of people for big avers use it. And you can use, you can do it like a surface tent. You can sort of drape it over and then shove a post up and hold it up. So it's very simple. But a lot, of, uh, uh, too many bad stories of you just get one rat on there or even a galah or something, cuts a hole in it. And, and I went down to, like, you know, the Canberra walking over, if you've ever been to that, that's, that uses that. And I mean, it's just like covered in holes. They're continually patching it. Um, so I thought, oh, no, stuff it. It was a bit of a pain because we had to put up all that um, framework to support the metal, but I mean, it, it, to support the you know, welded mesh. So I, think, I think it's better. Um, in terms of mouth spooning, I, I didn't even bother trying because if it's with an ovary that size, I mean, that's yeah, one hole, half inch by half inch, the mice are getting it in. And the other thing is those lights that are in there, the black lights, so they attract moths. So if you start using mouth, mouse mesh, moths can't get through it either. You can't, Insect can't get in, and the other thing is once a mouse gets in, can't get out. Um, so I've got poison up, up all the time. Uh, I wanted to try to not have any posts in the middle, so all those posts are gone. It sort of just looks better if it's open. Obviously, you need some supports for the roof here. So they're all gone, so the whole area is open inside, so that it looks like it would have if the mesh was there. 
Um, and I guess it was my wife's decision, but we get just preferred the, the timber to, to steel. Um, other agrees and stuff I've got are all made out of steel and Calamon. Um, and the craving we've already talked about the timber, I'll move on. Um, so this distance here is probably, that's it's a more than, it's, so it's 12, mostly 12 metres that way, and this distance is in the order of 10 to 11 metres. So that the wire goes all the way from the top, so I'll sort of cut 11 metre lengths and just roll it down and then use this to, this contraption to, to try and tension it. But this was this shit white wire, it's just crap. So this is, that's six foot, so that's 1800 wide there. Yeah? And it's just a nightmare. This is, this, this honestly, you get the center, it's as tight as, it's like your car string, it's that tight. And down the sides, it's like, just like, completely floppy, hopeless. And this, I could get enough tension on this that I could snap some of those wires. <laughs> and it still wasn't right. In the end, it's like, I mean, pets of birds, it's uh, no stress about it. But the worst one, I didn't mind so much on the roof, and I, look, I will paint the metal off the, the wire on the roof and the framework on the roof black eventually. Said that about two years ago, it still hasn't happened. <laughs> so it's one of those things that, you know, once once the birds are in, you sort of don't get around it. And same down here, so, each, so that's like 1800, 1800, you know what I mean, to fit the rolls. And here, that, well, that probably looks a bit exaggerated to what it really was. But that's as tight as a drum in the middle, and yet this is just dodgy ass, you know. Um, but anyway, oh, here, so there's a trench um, all the way around that's, well, it depends what I hit because there's shale where we are. So once I got put through the claim into the shale, I didn't bother going nuts and digging through the rock because I figured, well, if I can't dig through it with a, with a shale of rock, I'm not going to dig through it either. So I went down that far. So the wire goes down into the, into the bottom of the trench and then out about that far. So the trench was about that wide. So it goes down and out like that, and then I backfilled the whole lot and grabs it. <coughs> so hopefully that'll stop, I'm just going to stop mice, but stop rats. Hey, Glenn, just a, a quick question. You can call me Sam. This is not my Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Um, that, what gauge wire will you use? This is, I forget what the gauge, this is the heavier stuff here. Yeah, right. Whereas on the roof, it's light, it's not the lighter stuff, but it's quite light, the roof, the stuff on the roof. Yeah, no, because yeah. I'm building one at the moment. And you know, you have all the blood and rubble under the sun yeah, to, to yeah. try and fix the. Uh, well, there's Turner saying what he does, he buys the neck, whenever he's. I mean, you, you prefer to use the Italian stuff, but he's got to charge people more because it costs more. But if they want the cheap stuff, he actually buys the next size up. So if he wants 900 mil panels, he buys the 1200 wide stuff and he cuts the six inches off either side because that's the real dodgy stuff. In the middle, it's not too bad, but for some reason, it's just. I don't know why, I mean, make sure they can fix the manufacturing up. So yeah. apparently it's like when they pull it, yeah. it's pulled from the ends, well, it's yeah. really yeah. sure about the yeah. when the wires go into the manufacturing process, they pull from in, and that's why you get this sort of that new shape of yeah. the wire. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you buy a hex square wire? Why do I what? Why do you buy square mesh wire for? Instead of a hex up? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I built a chook pen. I built a chook pen recently. I mean, you can make that tight. Mate, you can tell you that you can just put the tight and put the whole strip in there. You still play tennis on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I don't know why did everybody go to the world of wire rather than that. Um, what do you call it? The chicken wire hex stuff. Yeah, I don't know. It's really. What do you mean? The injury half this is not too bad. But in terms of being flat. Yeah, as in terms of being able to pull that and stay there. In the white yeah. wire, I have used the, that, that stuff, but so this is, I think the, the, the fact it's a six foot wire roll too makes it bloody awkward to manhandle, you know, when it's this wide. It's, it's, well, it's bloody it's heavy stuff too. Yeah. But it's heavy yeah. stuff. Here's a stainless steel. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, Mr. Moneybags over here. Here's a stainless steel. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I wouldn't advise building on sloping sides again. So that's after backfilling all the trenches and everything around the outside. Um, door on. No, I did it on myself on weekends. Oh, I mean, obviously I don't help. Particularly for putting a wire on the roof because I don't like lights. So I got a neighbour to stand up on the roof while I was. Couldn't cheat him on. Fast in tech screws. <laughs> but actually what we did, we hooked a, hooked a rope up, tied the rope to the 
carport, which is up, up on the high side, and you have a harness on so that you can sort of walk down by. Because it's a bit, the roof's, like we did put some struts up to support it so you can walk on it. I just don't like standing on top. I don't like standing on, at, on heights at all, but when the roof's 40, when, it, when you're standing on it, it's on a 45 degree angle as well, and you've only got a bit of metal that's that thin to stand yeah, on, yeah, yeah. and you're looking straight down like that with a bloody, oh, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> 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 oh, so there's a tap in there, that was the idea there, so there's water. Because we're on tank water, so fortunately the, the, the main water line from our tank comes up close to there, so it's good having um, water in there. Um, that was when I, so I'd already released, the, because the, remember the existing area was there, so I'd already released birds in before I actually finished building, so there's still bits and pieces in there while the birds fly around and breeding. Um, a few plants going in, I'm not sure what I'm showing there, the stairs maybe. Um, so this is before, you know, the plants are only just well, haven't even been put in. That, that's all really grown up since then. The cubes find the holes in your acre toilet? They haven't. The, the, the ones that the ones that escaped were, um, were particularly when I was before I sort of got the roof all finished for the for the new oh, part. Were orange breasts. Oh, yeah. Mate, I don't know where they were getting out because I had sort of temporary just shade cloth that I sort of tacked up there to, to, to stop them getting out. And up, up where the house, behind the house, there's some um, um, bottle brushes and stuff. And I'd be, I think I'm sort of in the bathroom, I thought, oh, I recognise that sound. I'd look out the window, check the fine place in my tree there. And there were heaps of them once, there must have been six, seven years ago. They all went up here. Remember when you had the roof like that, there was one there, there was an orange pressure in that, we couldn't get to it. Yeah, they got caught in the, <laughs> between the water. I don't know why, yeah. Because normally they're not birds, I think, that try to escape. But I think they like the. the because of the shade pot, you know, they like to sort of hide up there and they, they found that it's secure to hide up there and then they sort of get in a crease and run along it and somehow find a way out to a, to a hole. Yeah. Catch any what? Catch you in the back? No. No. I don't know. Maybe the I don't think so. I think they'll be. They've been around for a while though. Okay. Um, some of the gadgets that are in there. Web camera. So you can, I can, if we have time, I can show you what it looks like now. But I mean, obviously it's dark. It does have infrared, so it does actually work at work at night. Not too bad, but obviously you're not going to see any birds because we're all asleep. Um, so this one, this camera that I've got, that's an IP camera. I've actually now put a light simply because, like down in, I, I run a IT sort of company, and I've got a web server and all my stuff sort of down in the garage. So we've got a line that runs up to the house to give all the kids and myself internet in the house. Um, so I took run a line, ran a line off that only fairly recently because it was going right near the over. I thought, oh, well, I'll just run a line in. So there is actually a cable, it's cable now. But the, you can um, look at that last one. Originally, I just used one of these things. So they plug into, you plug it into one power point in the house. Um, you plug an ethernet cable into that from your router. And then you plug another one into the pepper point in the Avery, another Ethernet cable goes to the camera. Or you can get what you, uh, this that camera actually does have a wireless connection, which would probably work if you're in a residential area, but it was a bit too far and slow for me to reach. You know, <coughs> the wireless signal wasn't any good. Um, but it's wired completely now. But the camera I've got is, I don't know if you know anything about this, but 720B is what they would call in a TV high definition. And then there's 1080p, which is full high definition. So this one's not quite full high definition, but it's pretty darn good. And it has pan, so it goes this way, left and right, and tilt, so it goes up and down. And it goes about 300 degrees, which you'll see in the next video. But the zoom is only digital, so as you zoom in, it gets cracked. So this that camera costs, without the shit, costs, I think it was about 120 bucks a few years ago. You can get them a lot cheaper than that now. But you need to go up to about a thousand dollars. They used to be like ten thousand dollars. For about a thousand dollars now, you get a really good one, like the police use. You know, for surveillance on the street, it's got really good optical zoom, like twenty times, and you can sort of be here and you can zoom in. And I reckon, well, I obviously haven't used it in over, but you can, you know, they zoom in down the street and read someone's number plate on a car, sort of stuff from it. You know, so if you have, if you've got that in an over, then you can zoom right in on a nest and. 
and even see what's inside of there, you know, they're awesome. Um, whereas this doesn't do that, but it's not too bad. So here's, here's some footage of it. I chucked, uh, this is literally after, this is before that last one. I literally just chucked some seed in and then I went out and um, through the computer recorded it. So that gives you some idea of the number of inches that are in there. Um, and the quality of the, of the footage. So you can go up and down and around and around, there's the things I want over here. So I use this to point at the, because I work down in the garage, so I can have this screen going on my computer if I want to catch birds. And then when I see the bird that I want, I've got a remote control that you'll see in a minute, so I can hit that to drop the door on the trap and then go up and get it. But unfortunately in those, like this cage, I'll show you in a sec. Many of you are no doubt aware small finches can get out of these bloody things. So if you try to catch orange breasts or ruddies or something like that, even, even young St. Louis, so I trap them, you got to actually by the time I bloody walk up there to get them, ah, I'm going to get out so they fit through the wire. So I will get um, a different, yeah, obviously this is stupid for the orange breasts, so I'll get another cage at some stage. Sorry? Well, you could do, but then when a bird just hit any cage, because that's basically what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so, that, so that's the sort of quality of the footage. And it said automatically that once you go into that was fairly early in the morning, so the sun was quite bright and was quite shady under there, so it automatically adjusts the, the aperture to um, correct for the light um, to adjust. That's my, that's my magnet train. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that before. So see, I can see the traps here, and then when a bird goes in, I can hit the hit the button to get the one that I want. Oh, yeah, he does. He seems to be around everywhere. He sort of quietened down a little bit recently, but when, when he, I think he's you know, getting towards the end of the season. Um, but when he's really active, he does chase. Like if he's on that prey, other birds just think, oh, come back a bit later. <laughs> he doesn't attack them or anything, but he just he's got a presence about it. Yeah. But they all sort of nick off. Yeah, so the web camera just becomes a. I might have a quick. Hang on, I'll have a. Oh, mate, we'll see where we go. See where we go for time, maybe. I can try and get. Can... Now, the remote, so the remote control tap, um, trap uses a car central locking kit. So you can see on this one, there's these solenoids here, and they go in and out. Yeah, I'll just turn it on. So they're designed to go up that way inside the door of a car, so that when it goes when it goes up and unlocks the door, when it goes down, the, the box and locks the door right. And they're they're cheap. So for I think it's about twenty five bucks, you get four of these solenoids for the, the four locks, and you get the box, the control box, with that black black box there, and obviously two remote controls. Um, in my case, I've got you saw the transformer. I've got a transformer in the over because I've got power. For this one, I stole the, uh, use our alarm in the house, so I stole the battery out of that because I thought, hey, I don't know the 12 volt source have I got, and that, that seems to be perfect. Um, so I hooked that, and the advantage of that is you can, then you can go and use the portal, so you can take it around and use it wherever you want, using different areas, I guess. Um, so what happens, hang on. Okay. So with this one, so it's sitting like that. And you can, like it's got a massive range just like your normal power remote does, so when you hit the button you drop them. But you need, you need something, because one of my neighbours when I was away managed to 
decapitate a finch. It was one of your friends, a yellowing material. Was it? Not long, it wasn't one from you, but it was one not long after I got them. And I think they were on a bloody one that was nesting. It was the only pair in the it wasn't in that aviary. It was the only pair in the aviary. I've gone away on holidays and they ran through a piano frame. Oh, how's everything going? Oh, you're good. Oh, unfortunately, we were mucking around and we, we killed one of your birds. You know, I thought, oh, yeah, well, maybe it. You know, something I don't care about, you know. Something I don't care about. Yeah. It's always the way, isn't it? So since then I've put, that's just a little bit of, on a bit of plastic or something I wrap around just so that at least all you do is strap it around the neck rather than cutting off the head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you have to use the master and the slaves and get your eggs or do you use the slaves? Oh, yeah. Two slaves, they're both slaves. Because yeah. the, 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 the mark, what, what, what he's talking about is, what Barry's talking about, in the kit you get four, and the master one has got another two. So this has got two wires, and if you get, so you just basically it's positive, positive and negative coming in, power coming in one and negative the other one, then it'll open, flick it around the other way, and it'll close. So you can work out your own circuit if you want to, to make it do that to activate these. Um, the master one, though, means that whenever it opens, it sends a signal to all the other ones to open. Because that's knowing what you want to do. When you open the door, car door, all the doors come up. Yeah. And same thing when you close them up, so that the driver's door, if you push the driver's door down, sends a signal to all the others, shut all the locks. Um, for us, we don't really want that. But you get four of these in each kit, but obviously, you don't really, you don't really need one for what we're doing. Yeah. But you can buy, you can buy just a you know, the remote control and the, and the wireless receiver separately, but the trouble is it was sort of like 25 bucks for the kit, for the whole kit, and 24.95 if you don't want the supplements, you know. <laughs> I know you may have sort of had a gauge, you know, so I've ended up, I've got millions of these, and not enough of those sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but I've set it up, like in the barn, I've, in my barn I've got two fairly big aviaries, and I've just used one kit, and I've just put a peg on if I'm not to catch out of one over, I put I normally put the peg on them anyway, just in case, you know, because it could get knocked off and then of course, you know, birds get trapped in there or can't clean or whatever, you know, if I'm not using it. What's the distance that they'll work at? I don't know, it's a long way, because it'll be at least 100 metres. I mean, I'm sitting in the garage with a brick wall between me and here. So it's like just the same as you can, mate, you know. I think I can't Where did you get that from? On eBay. So if you search for car central locking, you'll find you find millions of them. And there's a certain person in this room who's interested in one, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, well this is for you, Stan. Yeah. It's yours. Oh yours, there you go. <laughs> Hit the button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I actually on that, because it is using a only a small amount of power, obviously. Um, all the time, even if you're not using it, same as you can't, you know, if you, if you leave it long enough, eventually the battery will go flat, won't it? So I put a switch in the line there as well, so you can turn it off so that it's not on at all. So I mean, you can just pull, pull your battery off, you know, if you're not using it. Yeah, put a trickle charge Yeah. Now, so this is my one, this is the one in that big Avery. But I, I don't know why there was something mental block in my head that said I had to put that metal rod on, but it's completely unnecessary. So I sort of cable tied it back there and had the rod. Um, it would have been better to do it the way I did that one, not use the rod at all. But it's same idea, but as I say, I sit down in the garage and watch it on my feet. But sometimes I'm just sitting in the chair having a coffee. But now I've got the remote control sitting there and I'll just say, oh, I'll take that one. Yeah, so I just have a peg on it or whatever you call that little plain thing. Everything from eBay now has. Um, so that's the control box for the one in the Avery. That's that's the um, transformer which was just nicked off an old computer monitor. And it works, that one's that just happened to be 12 volts, but it's not that fussy. When I've got another Avery, it's only 9 volt transformer. I thought oh, I'll try it, so it works fine. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Might work with little 12 volt batteries or a little 9 volt battery, they don't have enough oomph in them, but it, it'll sort of open the side, but it'll sort of, you know. And I think the reality is once you've used it more than two or three times, you kill it. 
you know, those little square nine volt batteries in no time at all. So you do need something with a bit of all to make it really happen. Um, there's that mega fly culture that I, that I mentioned. The reason I put in a seal bucket because a lot of people have fly mesh over. I was told not not fly mesh and just weld mesh over the top. You want to stop the birds shitting in it because that apparently can mean that you set up something where worms can breed. I do remember you going, well, I've got the bird shit everywhere, but still it would concentrate in there, I guess. Um, and it's finches do eat, obviously, eat, eat the stuff. I've got these in most of my ovaries, but it's the uh, scarlet honey that is absolutely handless thing. They would spend their life sitting on top of here or hovering like hummingbirds at the. I couldn't get any footage on them, for you know, of course, whenever you want them to do something, they'll do it. But, and the uh, little vinegar flies will end up under the lid. Um, they absolutely love them. So they're not fruit flies, they're vinegar flies. They're actually the soft The soft yes. But which is where most of the knowledge that we know about genetics and stuff come from experiments with, with those for soft flies. So you can see? Yeah. Um, so as you can see, there's thousands of them in there. And I just, I mean, obviously with the, you know, the won't talk about all the foods that I feed, but all the different foods and stuff, basically fruit. But you've got to keep it, you kind of get to know if it's too wet, they all die. If it's too dry, you don't get any breeding. It needs to be sort of just a really shitty consistency, you know, kind of a, not quite mushy. <laughs> um, and in there, because it's just a dirt floor and it's such a big area, I've actually got a few holes drilled in the bottom so that the, the real erky goo can sort of drip out a little bit. Whereas obviously in other areas, you don't want all that crap all over the floor. So I just, you know, when, if it gets really gross, well, you just give it a rinse out and start again. It takes a couple of days and they, they start again. Obviously, during summer, you get gazillions of them, and during winter, it's a little bit harder to, to keep it down. Are they actually fruit fly or? No, uh, they're vinegar fly, which is the. Drosophila. Drosophila. That's the thing you play. People out. call it fruit fly, fly but it's, it's not. Fruit. No, no, no. Fruit fly that eats the fruit is the same, the same size as a house fly. These things are these things are yeah, yeah. So fruit fruit fly eats the sort of fruit that we eat. Yeah. Like uh, the fruit before it's rock. And fruit fly will only sting fruit on a tree, it won't touch anything on top of yeah. it. Yeah. Whereas these are really cl the clean up insects that clean up the rotting fruit. So they like the rotting fruit. So they like that if, if you put a fresh apple in there. I mean, they wouldn't get out and eventually, of course, but it, it, it's got to wait until it started to break down before they seem to really even like it. So it's perfect for, you know, old bits of apple and whatever. You know, yeah, banana they really like, but I don't feed those bananas. So I just put, like, you know, when I'm taking out the dishes each day, I'll have a look and I might just chuck a bit of old apple or a bit of orange or whatever it is that's sitting there in just to keep it all going. Um, the heat lamp. I think we already mentioned that, so that's a ceramic one. I was, con I was concerned initially because this is bloody hot here, but they're smart enough, they work out. I've never seen a bird walking around with burnt toes, so <laughs> <laughs> doesn't seem to be an issue, and they, they find it, but particularly the young ones. Um, mouse control, so obviously there are mice in it. I mean, I live in a rural area, there's mice everywhere. Um, when I'm out mowing, I remember when there was a mouse plague, not long after I got there. I'm, I'm just, I've got this little tractor, you know, that I it's whatever got a six foot thing on it for the mowing. I thought it was grasshoppers. I realised it's mice. Oh, it's this mouth! I'm just hoofing over them. <laughs> There's that many of them. So it's more about managing them, I think, particularly in rural areas. You've just got to manage them. There's no point in trying to kill them outside the cage because all you're doing is just making space for the next, next generation to come in. They're always there. Just managing it. And these, that looks like it's, you know, you've probably seen the big rat ones that are sort of that size. Yeah. Well, this is a small version, it's only that big, which I, I'd never seen before. But Daddy Brown, the, the um, vet up in Brisbane, the bird and reptile, and I don't know, he's got every animal under the sun, weird fish and all sorts of things. He put me onto these actually. I can't remember the place I've gone for them, but it was online again. So they're not cheap, it's anything, but they're only little. So at the moment I'm using <coughs> this Grade XB, which is a green pellet and it seems to be fantastic because I know even in the barn where I often, you know, I've got on the seed and stuff, the mice seem to prefer this stuff to birds, um, which I'm not aware of that happening before. Um, but 
you know, that's at the moment. In six months' time, there'll probably be somebody then that yeah. managed to survive and therefore don't buy road XP. Because I don't know over the years, you know, everybody seems to have to change um, regularly. But um, so that, that container, I'm not sure if there's another picture. Yeah, that one's a bit broken. But see, it's got a hole there. So that, that hole is only, look, a pinch could probably get in there if it really wanted to, but that could squeeze in, you know. Yeah. It's not much more than half an inch diameter. It's quite small. So the mice go in there, in theory, eat the stuff, go out, and as they go out, anything that they've got on them brushes off, and they wander out and die somewhere, and I pick them up and chuck them in the bin. And hopefully they don't get out and the dog eats them. I don't know whether that is a problem or not. Um, moths, with soft bills, moths are the best, best possible food you can get. This is another eBay special. Um, so this is actually, there's a black light up there, there's a fan here, and there's a basket there. So it's made, it's advertised to, 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 for killing mosquitoes, for trapping mosquitoes. I've never ever seen a mosquito with it. So it's completely useless in terms of mosquitoes, it doesn't get them at all. But it does get moths. Now this one's had it used and one of them bits is broken off. But there you can see, so there's the fan, that's, so they could, they could draw into the black light, the fan sucks them down into this chamber underneath. So that's the chamber, and this this sort of lid fits on top of the chamber. This is why this one's really good, some of them don't have that, because they sort of designed it just leave them on all the time, and then it will just dehydrate all the moths and they'll just die and sort of become nothing. And you know, once a month you chuck the contents in the bin. Um, but obviously we want them alive. So that lid stays on and it's got, it's not really great photo, but it's got little flaps just here. So when the fan, when the fan's on, the fan, the, the, the air pressure from the fan opens the little flaps to, and then the moths go in and then when you turn it off, flaps go back down again so the moths can't escape. So you can unscrew the whole thing, moths can't escape, take it down, put it in the fridge for a bit, that's what I, I don't use this so much you now because I've got the lights in the oven. Put it in the fridge for a bit to slow the moths down because otherwise you're walking on open and they'll just go fly out through the wire and they're all gone. Um, some people actually freeze them, um, but I find most birds they just don't like dead moths. They just seem to ignore them. If they're, it's good to get them where they're just so they can sort of, you know, they're only just moving a bit <laughs> enough to be interesting. And then they'll just hammer them there. Um, then I thought, so I was just doing that for ages, well not ages because I only had to do soft bills for two years, I was doing it for a while, and I thought, why not, why don't I just put the black lights in the aviary rather than all this dicking around catching the moths and put them in the fridge and all that. So that's what, so I put up, these are just, I, I bought these fancy looking ones that look nice, that have a nice fancy diffuser on them and all that, these, they're just a two, a two foot fluorescent tube. But the black light doesn't work through the diffusers. And I did a bit of an experiment and I took the tubes, you know, cut off the barbecue on place, take the black light with you. I'd stick it in there, you'd have to two foot and we'd try it, you know, to see if it did the disco effect. Yeah. Couldn't find any diffusers. Even ones that looked perfectly clear, the black light just didn't go through it. So if you ever do it, just buy the cheapest two foot um, yeah. fitting, you know, with no diffuser or anything is the best. But these tubes were the cheapest because for that other thing, if the black light blows, it's got a weird, you've probably seen them in Bunnings or Masters, every, lot, every model of those damn insect things has a slightly different fitting and a different glow, you know, and they charge you 20 or 30 bucks for the damn glow. They're tiny little things, you know, they last a while, but not that long. Whereas these, these tubes, um, are cheap as anything. They're only about six bucks, about five or six bucks each in Masters. Um, that's a shot at night, it doesn't, it's not really that bright. That's just the cameras pick it up. But it is a glow, it is pretty noticeable. And even as you, if you remember that first shot, as you come down Spanion's Hill, you can, you can see that, see the, see the two lights in the distance, but it's a little purple light. And I think too, I've never seen a bird awake at night, but I think if birds got disturbed, they probably enough light, but not a bit of put night lights in, that they could find their way back to the nest, or, or at least to a roosting spot. Um, there are some people who said to me that they'd be, they're still concerned about that that could be an issue, but I haven't found it to be an issue. So that's the chip. So they're on timers. 
and then they are two by ones from Mars. It's not five bucks for that for two of them. Yeah, that makes no five bucks. I'm sure. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But if you try to post something to try, even if you went, you know, post one of our meters, it probably cost you ten bucks to post it and thing to try. Mm. Um, so that's a tube, so it's just a normal two, two foot tube, actinic one, I'm not sure what that means. Maybe someone else does, but it means it's a black light tube. And they stock them at, well they stock them at Masters, yeah. only in my place. Um, so that's the one, that's the one to get. Hey? Mr. Colour, you've got BL. Yeah, BL stands for black light, yeah. But they're not, they're not purple, you know, like, I don't know if you remember when you went to the nightclubs as a kid. Yeah. They always look, the, the, the tube itself looked purple. Yeah. They look purple when they're on, but they don't look purple when you're blind. They just look like, you couldn't tell the difference looking at the tube. So I guess it's what you can, where is he? Liz has probably seen that, he sees a plum. Did you use these things? I think that's what it's for, or is it something that um, <laughs> doctors use? <laughs> 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 I'm not sure. <laughs> 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 but the last one I did was the so it comes with a little video receiver and it's got a SD card in it so you can record it and it's actually wireless so you can obviously, you can attach it to here but when I turn this on you get the picture straight away so you can hold it here and be, you know, looking in the nest or whatever you want to do um, and it does also clip on the back of the, on the back of here as well um, and works too, obviously and then the idea, or my idea, was to be able to look in nests. Now it turns out it's absolutely brilliant for, I'll show you this in the video, I'll go in a minute looking in nests. It's absolutely brilliant for sort of looking at um, parrot nests and things, but the pinch nests are a little bit too small, you can't get the bend on it properly. Yeah. So you'll notice it's got LEDs on the end, uh, which are fantastic for lighting up. But it comes with a little 45 degree mirror that sits on the end, which you think, well, wouldn't that be great, right? you know? Because then you've just got to put the stick it straight in rather than having to bend down to look into the nest. But the light, it's not, it's not, the mirror's not big enough, so I want to try, I'll try a dentist mirror or something that's a bit bigger. It doesn't reflect enough light. If it's bright, it works fine, but in the nest it doesn't work so well, which you'll see in a minute. Um, Um, orange chat, orange chat chip, say that part, orange chat chip, orange chat chip. 
So there's stuff you can't go all the other parts of the world. Oh, there it is again. I think I'll show you. It's two. Two of them, is it? One on the other side, one on the side. That's the other side, the one. But you see what I mean? Because it's looking straight over the top. Of where you might look down and look over. So anyway, I'll try with a dentist mirror because the light doesn't reflect off the little mirror. There's a little <coughs> in here. There's like a tiny little mirror thing. So there's a little mirror device in there, but it's next to useless. Diamond. Diamond. Should be diamond. Yeah. 
What an irrigation specialist. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, good thing. <laughs> yeah. Like I own the landscape because I don't think I ask. What was the name of the place? Watermatic irrigation. Go on, speak. Water learning. It's up house for the sales table stock. Not a problem. What's that? Three items tonight, four now. Anything else anyone else wants on the stock? Oh, that'll get 400 bags of grass. And that. Um, is the end, but I'll show you because you haven't really seen these are my favourites the, uh, the scale of honey eaters. So that's the nectar is basically, and I'll, another time we can go into the food and everything, but it's basically brown sugar and water or dark brown sugar and water. So that's the hen. There's a bush buggy in the background. Yeah, you've got to spend here. You lied, there's this one there. But if we're going to get this importing going, I don't know whether you watched the Agriculture Society had um, Daniel Gowan speaking last night and they actually did a live stream to YouTube, it's still on YouTube, it's got the importation. If we ever get the import stuff, I think hummingbirds would be something I'd want. I'd love to get some hummingbirds. And these remind me of the way they fly. I remember going to San Diego Zoo and having a, you sort of, you almost think there's a bee or something there, you go, oh, it's a bird. <laughs> and it's fine bird too. To me, I, I always thought they were a bit of a mystery, the soft bills, you know, I'm not sure when we do much. Not so hard, not so hard. And I think that, well, I don't know, I found, today, I found them to be pretty hard. I haven't, I lost, when I bought the spine bills, the only one I lost was a spine bill virtually the day after I got it. And that's, you know, but the others have all seemed pretty, pretty hardy to be honest, yeah, pretty, pretty tough. Yeah, but then they've the other the other people are sick, sorry? Have they bred for you, the spine bills? The scarlets haven't, no. The, the spine bills, to be honest, the pair I've got, they're just starting to tolerate each other. I think they hated each other for the first 12 months. They were always at opposite ends of the aviary. Not that they really harassed each other, but now I've actually seen the cock that are displaying to the, to the hen. So um, maybe, which is bizarre, because I'm not supposed to breed this time of year, but um, at least it is, you know, maybe they're getting on. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. How, how long have you had it set up? How long have I had it set up? Getting on for two years. Because when did you last come to my place? Uh, Longer than that. It was poles. Yeah. Poles, was it? it was oh, okay. Poles, I said. Yeah, yeah. The old yeah. lady was still there. Yeah. yeah. So I just wondered how it set up with the cold weather. Well, it wasn't a problem last year. I mean, look, yes, I lost some birds during the cold weather, but I've always lost some birds during the cold weather. I don't think any more than normal. And I do get concerned, like that huge storm we had yesterday, I think, oh, shit, you yeah. know, what's going to happen there? Because it actually, most of our weather comes from the south and the southwest, the bad, bad storm, but that one yesterday didn't. It swung around and sort of came from the north and actually belted straight into the barn and everything and, and would have belted right into there. Yeah. All this I haven't lost anything, everything sounds fine. But I have obviously in the bushes where they're not under cover, like there was a storm a few weeks ago and there was a, I knew there was a diamond nest in a fairly exposed position. And the next, I didn't, I was busy the next day and I didn't get out there late the day. And there were, there were four diamond chicks, three of them dead on the floor. But the nest was absolutely soaked, sopping wet. And I mean, that's what happens, yeah. I mean, if they build out and open. But, you know, if I was aware, I guess when it's a big over there, you're not aware of what's going on in each nest either, whereas in smaller areas, you sort of know that the diamond's got a nest there. And you might even put something over it if it's out. Yeah. Whereas there, I didn't know until I saw a diamond trick on the floor, I thought, hell, one of them was still alive, but the other's all can't it, obviously didn't make it. Yeah. So I guess that happens a bit. But if you wonder in the wild when there's a big storm, you know, Virtually every nest must get lost, I, I presume. And then they all just start again the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got any problems with uh, uh, predator birds? 
Yeah, there's, but but what's interesting, because there's all those, um, they've grown up fairly well, those but mainly mainly because there's a bowl rush in there, the birds, of course, they get concerned and the hawk comes and they're out there they having a land on the avery. But because it's such a big avery, they all go boom, straight into the bush, they head, head down into the brush like they would in the wild. Whereas in a smaller avery, they all go bloody nuts and hit the wire and you know, and get, and get, yeah, and get damaged. But that whole lot just go bang straight down into the into the dense um, shrub. So yeah, obviously you don't like to see hawks around here trying to chase them away. But, yeah. but I found we've got a family of magpies hanging around. <coughs> I don't deliberately feed them, but they do eat traps and stuff like that that we check out. And I reckon they. Probably they don't chase the hawks away, but they keep the butcher birds away. Yeah. I don't know, it's just my theory, because since they've been around, I haven't seen so many butcher birds. Um, and there's a family of them there, so whether that's true or not, I don't know. My, my wife feeds uh, three magpies every afternoon out the front, yeah. and they are about the only bird I see around our place mm. that won't tolerate the butcher birds. They chase them away with the butcher birds chases everything else, but not the magpies. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think it's. I think that's good. Yeah. 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 And 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 the finches seem to know too. If it's a butcher bird, they hop. Whereas the magpies, they don't worry about it. Because with those black lights on the roof, the big bogon moths get attracted to it too because they can't get through the wire. So they're on the top, and the magpies come and grab them off the, and the birds just keep flying around. In fact, because underneath, you saw where those black lights were, there's so on. So the roof is basically, it's got the colour bond, then there's the metal battens, and then there's um, the wire, and then there's shade cloth right underneath. So the insects get caught under the shade cloth. So most of the moths, they always hang out in the bushes, of course. But at night, there's thousands of them in the next in the morning, on all under the shade pot, and there can be there'll be you know there's magpies just on the outside, only that far away, and there's yeah there's yeah there's horrible yeah, hangers there's another up there hanging upside down, and the lorikeets are oh, eating moths and whatever off the shade pot, and then they might they don't seem to bother. They must know that the magpies don't know. Yeah, yeah. Just out of curiosity, yeah. do your family of magpies get looked after as well as ours do? Ours does? I don't think so. I don't deliberately for you. But they, don't, they uh, do. We don't either. It just happens to be packs of food in our freezer every day. <laughs> <laughs> One comes out every day at <laughs> 5 o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> when they're at the front door looking <laughs> at you. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a friend of mine at Dungog who had, he's got, um, Channel Bill, a pair of Channel Bill cuckoos, you know those huge uh, bloody uh, noisy bastards? Uh, anyway, he's got a pair of those in that and he's going to try and breed them, now they're parasitic. So he, he's, he's also got some magpies that he's breeding, but he's also just got some ravens as well um, to use as the host for those. So I, I prefer the magpies to ravens, but most, both magpies and ravens are amazingly intelligent animals, super intelligent animals. Yeah. But I don't know how he's going to breed them. He's got a big able with them, but um, I don't know how he's going to go and breed them. Um, but it's an interesting thing to do. There's actually Graham Phipps has got, I think, one of his students, because I gave him Andrew's name, yeah. he's got one of his students at Richmond doing a breeding, whatever, what do they call it? They buy up a yeah. thing about yeah. different species, and for some reason this kid decided he wanted to do the Channel Bill Cuckoo. And it's like, well, who's got Channel Bill Cuckoo's in captivity? Andrew's the first person I've ever heard of who's mad enough to do yeah. something like that. Yeah. Well, you've got to keep magpies and <coughs> crows and stuff to as the host species. It's a bit different. The pintail white is the same way, isn't it? They lay egg and they lay one nest. No, they well, Supposedly they lay an egg, one egg in each St. Helena nest. And it's debatable whether they kick an egg out, but it, it, I think. The consensus is that generally they don't, they just lay their egg. Well that one hatched, there were four St. Alutas and one pintail white came out of that nest. But I know um, David Holmes, he, cheeky bugger, sent me a, sent me a picture before I read mine of, he had one St. Alutas and three pintail whites came out of one nest. So I think I'm lucky too. So, you need to get a camera, those cameras you get quite from the nest, I've got a nest in here. What's that? If you knew? Yeah, with your camera, you could, you could watch it, you could record it, you could watch where the hen went. 
Yeah, well, to be honest, I'm at one stage, I've distilled the, 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 I've had the same learners out, I've had the same learners out today, actually, there are a couple of forms, which um, I didn't know I really had, anyway, obviously I've got four bloody more, but um, there's not that many same learners pledging now, so I've sort of given up, but I'm going to bring another one, but who knows, but early in the season, I mean, the, the, the hen, the pink tail water hen, you said it there, she could just spend half a life, either being harassed by the cockbird, with him doing his, and I've got some, footage of him because he, he sort of hovers like this over the top of the hen and, nine, and he's doing this all day just chasing her and hovering over the top of her like that and nine times out of ten she sort of looks at him and goes oh, piss off and just flies off you know <laughs> but then every so often she will actually twitch and, and not do the do but then she bolts straight to where all the same line in this are and she spends half, half her life being harassed by him and the other half searching for all the nests so I'm sure that, I don't know, I don't know what happened, I don't know why. I only end up, I'm sure she must have laid more than my knees. Um, well, probably by you young come down the end, yeah? Yeah. Oh, well, I hope that one down, that's all right. I'll leave it in there. Yeah, there's murder in the Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much.